Good evening, students and parents. Hope you're doing well. This is our final for looking at fractions. These are decimal fractions. They are tenths and hundredths. These are the kind of fractions that appear on your calculator. These are also the kind of fractions that we use for our own money system. So dimes are tenths and pennies are hundredths. So it takes 100 pennies for a dollar bill or one dollar bill and it takes 10 dimes for one dollar bill. So hopefully you are familiar with this. Looking at it as a fraction is a little bit different than what we're used to, but I think you're ready for it. In our math, we're gonna be looking at something, more fractions, but these are called decimals and they're tenths and hundredths. Now in the past I said, you know those tenths that we had, because we're studying fractions that go from halves to thirds to fourths to fifths to sixths to seven to six to eighths to ninths to tenths. And I said, you know those tenths are gonna come up later and we may even have our hundredths. Well, this is what those fractions would look like. Now here we have squares, but they could be rectangles or circles. Really hard to divide a circle into tenths and super hard to divide into hundredths. So we're just gonna stick with squares for right now. But this could be this could be one tenth all the way across, and these would be one hundredths all the way across. Now these would be proper fractions, but there's also a thing called a decimal, okay, that changes the fraction into our base 10 number system. And these are the kinds of numbers that you see when you're at the grocery store and they ring up the cash register and they say, okay, that'll be $36.95. That 95 cents is this part, okay? It's taking that dollar and dividing it up into hundredths. We could put pennies in here and there'd be 100 pennies in here and this would be equal to $1. This would be equal to a dime. So a dime is a tenth of a dollar and a penny is a hundredth of a dollar. So we use these all the time. Calculators, if you use a calculator, you are not gonna get um, an improper fraction or even a fraction at all, you're gonna get, get a decimal. So calculators <clears throat> use decimals. And since you're gonna be using calculators in the upper grades, it's good to know what a decimal is and how it relates to other fractions. So let's take this one, and let's say these are all tenths. <clears throat> And um, there's 10 of them. So here's 10 tenths. Here's 100 hundredths. So 100 hundredths would look like this. Okay, and 10 tenths would look like this, right? <laughs> this is one thing that we talked about last week. How can this be that these both equal the same thing? But you can see this equals that whole amount and this equals that whole amount. We're just dividing things into smaller and smaller pieces. This is still equivalent to one, and this is still equivalent to one. Isn't that bizarre? I told you that was really kind of weird, and it is. And a lot of people struggle with that, but you're learning this in fourth grade, so hopefully when you get to the upper grades, you're gonna learn, you're gonna know, oh, hey, whole fraction is always equal one no matter what. So without filling anything in here, the, the unit fractions in here, and I'm certainly not gonna fill in unit fractions here. These are too small. I'm gonna go ahead and make a model of these fractions. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say we, see, we save six of these. Or let's say seven of them. I don't wanna color that much. <laughs> and we do the same thing. We're gonna, we're gonna say, okay, let's remove this amount. And what would this fraction be if this amount was removed? Well, in tens, it's really easy because I only uh, took out three. So there has to be seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be seven tenths. Okay, and again, I can't write this in the box because we have the model here, but later on we could shortcut that, get a little bit more abstract. Now over here is where the important part is. This is no longer one whole anymore. 
So I'm gonna put a zero and a decimal point. We call this a decimal point. We don't call it a dot, we don't call it a period. We call it now, we call it a decimal point. Because I do not have a hole here, I have seven tenths. And the first place value here is tenths. So this is 10 and we use T8 tenths. So this is seven tenths, just like we would pronounce it if we had this fraction over here. <clears throat> now over here we have hundredths. Okay, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take three rows over here since both these are the same size and they're divided this way the same. This one's divided this way 10 ways and this way 10 ways. Um, let me take three of these rows out too. One, two, three. Okay, let me take those out. But you know what? Instead of having seven tenths, you're going to find something unusual here. Okay. You're going to find 10, because there's 10 now divided in each one of these columns. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. There's going to be 70 hundredths. So we're going to count each one of these one at a time. It would take us a while. But we can count by tens because each one of these columns is 10. Now, in our decimal over here, I don't, I don't have one anymore. I don't have 100 because I've taken 30 away. So I have zero ones. And this is very important to put zero ones in here so everybody knows what's going on on this side of the decimal point. I put my decimal point down and I'm going to say 70. Now you can see how similar these two numbers look. But I've taken this two. I've put a zero in here for the hundredths. And that makes all the difference in the world. It's going to later on. Now, the other bizarre thing is that now seven tenths and seven hundredths, these are equal to each other. Or they are equivalent. This has larger plates, uh, larger pieces. This has smaller pieces. But essentially, these are the same. These areas are equivalent, equivalent as far as their amount. This amount right here and this amount right here, they are equivalent. And ignore my phone going off in the background. Usually it just stops. There it goes. So these two amounts are the same, so these two numbers are equivalent. Seven tenths and seventy hundredths are equivalent. These two models are equivalent. Seven tenths written, written in the decimal form and seventy hundredths written in the decimal form over here are also equivalent. Same amount. So if you got seventy, if, if, a, if, if a sheet cake was divided into a hundred pieces and you got seventy of them, and the same size sheet cake was divided into 10 pieces and you got seven of them, you would be getting the same amount. So we'll do one more here uh, together as a class. Uh, we'll look at this one, okay? And then there'll be some examples of having a, a proper fraction Okay, two proper fractions, and you coming up with the model, okay, and the decimal. Model, or model, proper fraction, decimal. Model, proper, or model, proper fraction, decimal. Model, proper fraction, and decimal. Since all of these, again, are equivalent, they all equal the same amount, you should be able to come up with um, examples of that given only one of these terms.
I know that sounds difficult, but we'll take you through it slowly. Uh, watch the video again a second or third time if you need to. And I look forward to helping along understanding decimals. You'll be using decimals very much a lot when you get into using calculators to calculate your uh, sums, your differences, your quotients, and your products.